Hello and welcome to Pretty Chance. Uh, here today we're just moving uh, some small uh, Atta and Acromimix uh, leaf cutter colonies into some small containers. Um, they're very small so the containers that they're going in need to be small as well. Uh, if we add uh, large um, small colonies into a large container the air within the container will dry the fungus out within a few hours so it's important that um, in the kind of founding stages of the leaf cutters that the containers are really not much bigger than the fungus itself so this is quite key. These are just cheap tubs that we've picked up uh, you'll see me use these quite a lot they're, they're very useful these. So we're just drilling 10 millimeter holes in the side at the very bottom uh, of the tub so the ants can come and go. Um, we've kept the hole quite small 10 millimeter um, so that uh, we can plug it so when the colonies are sold we've got little plugs that fit in those um, and you can also attach 10 millimeter tubing. Um, you don't want a 20 millimeter hole because again you don't want too much air circulating around that fungus um, and taking the moisture out. So we've tried and tested uh, 10 millimeter is perfectly fine. Uh, the ants will work out how to take leaves um, back into the um, into the garden. Then they're, they're not stupid. So um, a tried and tested method. We've sped the film up slightly. Um, there's not a lot of editing in this. So these are the. Um, landscape trays that we use. Uh, we're just applying some anti-slip. Uh, I find these are great for these kind of colonies because it allows you to feed them and keep a really close eye on them and remove any debris because uh, what they will do when the colonies are small is uh, take out all the dead, dying or expired fungus and they'll usually dump it in one of the corners uh, and it's quite easy to get rid of that. I usually use a hoover with um, a length of tubing and just hold the tubing um, over the hoover and with the other end you can kind of selectively remove bits without sucking up all the ants um, so I find that's quite useful uh, this is a bit of cotton wool uh, just dampening it down saturating it, uh, shaking off any excess moisture we'll just pop that in um, and that will provide uh, the humidity levels required. We shouldn't need to, to uh, moisten that either. That should be just more than enough for that colony. Um, you're just trying to get that fungus to a stage where it's kind of self-supporting. Um, here you see we've got the um, fungus in jars. So when the fungus is very small we start them out on that. And that's plaster of Paris, uh, about two centimeters in the bottom of a glass. Um, and that's hydrated and that keeps the humidity up. We've fashioned a lid at the top so the ants can come and go to remove any uh, expired fungus. Uh, again, it's very really important that they they're able to remove that um, from the fungus garden um, as it will produce carbon dioxide and uh, kill the ants. So, um, it, yeah, it's quite key that they... They can remove any debris away from the, the fungus garden. And of course it's you know for the benefit of the ants as well, they need a healthy environment. So we just place the fungus off off side uh, off centre there with the cotton to the right. The ants can come and go from that container. We'll leave the glass upright because um, there is a bit of pupae and uh, brood and workers and they will eventually move out of that tub. You'll see that the glass contains a little bit of soil. We always put a little bit of damp soil in uh, at that founding stage because it gives them something that uh, they can use to plug up gaps. So by providing them with a bit of soil, uh, you will actually see them kind of plugging holes. Um, again, to keep that humidity in, which is key to the fungus. Uh, at this stage we don't heat the uh, colonies, we don't have them on a heat mat or anything like that. Um, it's kind of safer to keep them at a temperature of about 20. Um, I mean their ideal native is, is 24.5 Celsius with a humidity range of about 90%. But 
but um, if you haven't got your heating set up correctly, um, you won't get a second chance, especially with the col with the, the fungus being so small. Um, we invariably wouldn't sell a colony of this size um, until it had got just slightly larger than a golf ball and we had 150 workers because um, usually beyond that point it's then self-supporting um, these um, early stages of uh, fungus are, are quite critical um, and it's not uh, it's not an easy job to get them going from this stage so this is the point where you lose them so if you're really not on the ball in the early stages you can get away with having a larger colony and, and, and suffering setbacks because the colony will shrink and you can visually see it shrinking with a fungus this small it can dry out in 72 hours um, and you don't get a second chance once the fungus got it has gone so will the ants because uh, obviously they're symbiotic so one can't live without the other Again, we've got a bit of soil in there. They haven't actually used it, but again, it just helps to keep the humidity up. Um, I find with the soil setups, you will get, um, or you know, even with small amounts of soil, you'll get lots of um, small flies in there, um, which is why I tend to prefer non-soil setups for the leaf cutters. Um, they, I mean, they're beneficial to the fungus, uh, and they do actually clean the detritus up but they're not um, particularly pleasant to look at anyway any questions pop them down below and we'll try and get back to you thanks very much oh and don't forget to subscribe below